Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, June 18th, and I have no idea what the weather is because I'm actually recording this Saturday night again, but I'm sure it's going to be a very nice day wherever you are. Oh, you're not going to be too bad here either. Ah, so yes, June, it's cold still. It's still only getting into the 70s. Weird weather. Uh, but uh, vegetables are loving it. All the plants are going crazy. Starting to see some cherry tomatoes and the tomatillos are popping out. The ground cherries are popping out. It's just really exciting, exciting time for a summer garden, indeed. I have my Lane Crown Achievement pipe. Uh, I always forget who made this pipe. It was made by an old defunct company that began with an H. It was a French pipe making. I want to say Henderson, but that doesn't sound right. Anyway, these were stumbles that uh, they produced and never finished, and Lane bought them and had them finished and sold them. Uh, well, actually, I'm trying to remember how this worked. If you if you bought the pipe, you got a pound of Crown Achievement, or if you bought a pound of Crown Achievement, you got the pipe. It was one or the other. Uh, seems like the pound the buy the pipe, get the Crown Achievement was probably the better, probably what happened. Uh, so I still have the Crown Achievement. <laughs> <laughs> and the pipe has been wonderful. Uh, they it, they had just reintroduced the blend, and I was hoping it might be similar to the old uh, number ten Downing Street, and it wasn't. But it's it's a good blend. I just don't smoke it very often, so pound is a lifetime supply for me. And while we're way up, of course, I'm using my hippie lighter. I haven't taped it up yet. This will get covered. But... If you don't know the hippie lighter story, watch last night's live stream or follow me on Instagram. Can only tell it so many times. So, did I mention this is all Joe Krantz? I don't remember if I did or not. In fact, I might have said haunted bookshop because I'm just used to it, but this is all Joe Krantz. So I spent the uh, the afternoon in a very pleasant endeavor, I finally watched The Shining. Uh, you may remember my good friend Couch decided during one of my live streams that everybody should send me a copy of it because I said I had never seen it. Thankfully, only one person sent me a copy, and I am thankful. Uh, it, was, it was very nice to that person. I'm very grateful for it. Uh, so, wife's out of town this weekend. I worked this morning because I'm an idiot and I decided Saturday morning was a perfectly fine time to do some work you know like work work not not housework and uh, I stopped for lunch and I thought you know what I'm tired of working I'm gonna enjoy myself so I got out the DVD and uh, me and the dogs watched The Shining I probably should have done a little more research on, like, you know, what year it came out and things like that. Stanley Kubrick uh, film, very, very famous, so I probably don't need to do much of an introduction. Uh, Jack Nicholson, Shelley Duvall, Scatman Crothers, say no more. That's, you know, I'm in. Uh, yeah, so the DVD was a digitally remastered version. Beautiful. Uh, you know, beautiful, took full advantage of the Blu-ray. Uh, looked great on the screen and uh, yeah it was it was a pleasant afternoon I enjoyed watching it I wasn't scared um, maybe it's because there was just so much hype going into this you know everybody said oh you, you know don't watch it in a dark room and you know stuff like that um, and I've been putting it off for so long because I don't this is gonna sound really snobbish or something but I don't typically watch horror movies that were made after I was born the only reason for that is I tend to not enjoy them. Uh, you know, the late 60s, mid to late 60s is when they sort of stopped writing really good horror and started filming really good horror. So it became blood and gore rather than psychological thriller. And I prefer the psychological thriller. Now, I have to say, The Shining is clearly in that category of films, uh, although it did have some, actually it had a lot of blood and gore in it too. Um, but yeah, I put it off for quite a while, and uh, eventually a fine uh, YouTube fan, uh, feels weird to say fan, viewer, uh, 
forced my hand and I finally got around to watching it this weekend. So, I didn't find it scary. Uh, didn't even find it particularly tense, to be honest. Uh, the plot, and I don't think I have to worry about spoiling this for you, but just in case, cover your ears. The plot is basically a guy goes nuts and a little boy may or may not be psychic. That's it. That's, that's the whole plot. Um, nothing really happens. It's, it's very slow to develop. The characters are poorly developed. And in fact, I, I don't feel like you got to know any of the characters. There's a lot of loose ends that are left out there. Um, you know, and then, and then, you know, oh, was it ghosts? Was it, it, eh, it was okay. It was, it was an entertaining afternoon, but, uh, I would not put this in my top 10 movies. I would not put this in my top 10 horror movies. Uh, I would definitely put it on a list of movies I'm glad I watched. So, you know, I'm glad I, I, I got it off the list. I, I enjoyed it. I'm, I'm not trying to be harsh about it. I just don't think it lives up to the hype that it's had over the years. And, uh, um, now maybe I have to reconsider some other movies that I didn't want to watch because I was thinking they were going to be too over the top in terms of the slasher sort of stuff going on. Because I just don't like that. But uh, yeah, this was, I'm glad I watched it. Could I have watched it down here in the dark at midnight? You know, in all honesty, I'm, I'm going to say yes, but at the same time, I have to add to that, that if I was to sit down here at midnight in the dark and watch Sesame Street, I'd probably get scared. <laughs> so, I don't I should, probably just shouldn't do that. I shouldn't sit down here in the dark at midnight. It doesn't matter what I'm watching. It's a basement in an old house. Your mind's going to wander. So yes, that was, that was The Shining, and uh, if you haven't seen it, it's it's worth a it's worth a look, definitely. But it's not it's not a life changing movie by any stretch. Uh, one thing I, I I do have to comment on just because I I knew this going in, so this was one of the first movies to make full use of the Steadicam technology. Um, I know a lot about Steadicam because. It was actually the guy that invented it, I believe, was from Philadelphia and actually from one of the neighborhoods close to where I lived, where I had some friends and stuff. One of my friends that's very into filmmaking knew a lot about it and I think actually knew the guy, maybe through someone or something. I can't remember all the details, but yeah, Steadicam's kind of been in the background of my life for a while, and I knew that this was one of the first movies, if not the first major film, to make use of it. And boy, did he make use of it, uh, to the point where at times you might feel a little seasick watching it. It was oddly filmed, um, to be honest. It was, it was oddly filmed, and it made it a little hard at times to, to enjoy it, just because the camera angles would would just change as, as they were moving through the scene. and. Yeah, it was it was an unnecessary use of study cam in my in my opinion. But who am I to question Stanley Kubrick? There's some guy. Yeah. The story though is interesting. So he, he wrote or co wrote the, the story. I noticed from the credits. I didn't do any research on this. And I also avoided like watching any reviews or reading anything about it because I just wanted to kind of experience it as if it had just come out and I didn't have all this background. I'm sorry, I don't know what's beeping over here, but my wife, since she's on the road, I worry about her when it beeps. It's not her. Um, yeah, so I, I, I was as, as unbiased as I could be going into this. And, uh, you know, I, I knew about the Steadicam and I knew about the fact that it was mostly filmed on sets, but I didn't know much about the story. And I didn't realize that Kubrick co-wrote it with someone. But that's interesting to me because it's it's got some similarities to other films, you know, notably uh, 2001 Space Odyssey, where you've got this, you know, the 
character is taken out of his normal realm and put into isolation in a sense. Uh, so that was kind of interesting. And the whole time I was thinking, boy, this movie just wouldn't be the same today because, you know, I, I get the idea that you would be out there isolated and snowed in and whatnot, but you'd still have internet, right? <laughs> you'd still have YouTube. You'd just set up a live stream, chat with people. Or Skype your your friends. They, they were actually using a, a, a CB radio to keep in touch with the fire uh, watch team because their phone lines had gone down. Yeah, different world. Not necessarily a better world, just a different world. So, doing this in the evening because tomorrow, uh, I have my usual busy morning, but I also need to go out. I'm, I'm going to be uh, visiting a friend who, uh, actually a spouse of a friend, but I know this person. Uh, just got... Um, I don't know how much detail I should go into. He, he just was diagnosed with cancer. Um, sounds like he's going to be okay. He's going to have to go through chemo. He's got, uh, got a rough road ahead. And he's kind of worried about some stuff. And I, you know, since I went through it, I'm going to spend a couple, an hour or two maybe, uh, just, you know, answering questions and hopefully giving him information that will help him feel better about what he's got to go through. Because with anything, the scariest thing, the scariest part is what you don't know. Uh, the uncertainty is what, what always worries you most. And not many folks have gone through that, and those that have, not many folks have gone through that and come out the other side, which is sad. And those that have, you know, it's not like you can find them easily, you know, they're, they're, they're not that common, so, or, or they don't talk about it, maybe, and I can understand that, too. I sometimes worry that I talk about it too much, but what I told my friend was, you know, I, I've almost got this sense of survivor guilt, because I, I got through this, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't easy, but I watched other people being treated at the same time as me that, you know, didn't make it, or that, you know, were really really sick or whatever and I kind of feel like gee I I got off the hook easy for some reason and maybe it's just to talk about this kind of thing and to help people out when when they need it so that's what I'm gonna be doing tomorrow and uh, yeah so we'll see how that goes I'm not gonna talk about it anymore because it's you know someone else's personal business I probably said too much but No filters here on the channel. Uh, what else is going on? We got we got some weeding to do this weekend, and uh, I'm not going to touch my work computer tomorrow. I promise you. Promise me. Uh, yeah, I need need a day off, and I'm going to smoke the rest of this old Joe Krantz, which I am terribly enjoying. Um, Smoking back and forth between them is, is a real treat because you, you can really pull out the differences between old Joe Krantz and Haunted Bookshop. I've been enjoying that. I might have myself a cigar tomorrow morning. I haven't, haven't done that yet. It depends on the rain because if I get up in the morning and everything's wet uh, and it has been raining at night, which is good for the garden. Well, folks, we have achieved full-blown babble. So <laughs> the babble meter has hit 10. And rather than push it to into that 11 range, I think I'm going to call this to a close. Thanks a lot for joining me. I hope you have a fantastic Sunday and you're looking forward to a great week ahead. And until we speak again, I would look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now. Mm -hmm.